all present here, we are here this morning to celebrate the legacy of our four leaders. We are talking about four leaders, one revolution. And we are doing so in presence of our comrades from our sister parties as they have been introduced to all of us. This celebration is represented by the unveiling of the historical mirror, which I must proudly commend our local artist, who has really done a commendable job just to bring up the idea and to think how we can in a very effective and fashionable manner can bring these con three continents together in a way of art. We really commend you, our artists. I must say, as we are present here to witness the unveiling, to me, this should be an inspiration to all of us as this mirror is dedicated to our four leaders who have defined and continue to inspire the trajectory of our respective countries. The historical journey we travel together is a proud legacy for succeeding generations in our respective countries. In the past, we have gone through different times and in their hardships. In the present today, we continue to stand firm together in search of justice and secure world. Let this not be forgotten that we know as much as most of our countries got their independence, we still have parts of the world which are still struggling for their independence. As we gather here today, the Palestine people still yearn for the freedom to exercise their right to self-determination. And I'm glad that the minister from Palestine is here with us. I'm sure some of you will recall that this event was supposed to take place sometimes back. But for the reasons we didn't know, it was postponed. And as we all know, nothing happened without a reason. I believe we were made to postpone this event to allow the minister of Palestine to be present. And Comrade Minister, you are welcome, and we sincerely feel that this event has now been elevated higher than what it could be had we done it sometimes back. The Palestine people are subject to a human blockage and separation Parishing walls that prevent them from accessing their basic human needs. We have listened to the minister who is informed of something that happened today. And we don't know. By the time we end this event, we will not know how many would have killed. They have been and continue to be denied basic rights to their land and many have been forced to become refugees for generations. And when you talk about refugees, the majority of Namibians, they know exactly what it means when you are forced out of your own country, the trauma that you suffer. <laughs> but when you have a clear mission, you stand it until victory is achieved. And we have no doubt 
that our comrade from Palestine, they will stand that. In fact, there are parallel scenarios to what the Palestine people are going through and what we have experienced in Namibia during the apartheid era. Both Palestine and Namibia were mandate territories after the First World War under the League of Nations mandate system. The combat of the League of Nations gave Britain mandatory power over Palestine. Similarly, the same mandatory power over Southwest Africa as Namibia was then known. It was also given to Britain. So we enjoy today is denied to the Palestinian people. At the difficult time and needy time, Cuba, under the historical leadership, as Comrade Nahas has mentioned, and uh, Commandant Hef Fidel Castro, did not stand idle. They came to our help, helping the people of Namibia. When Kasinga was attacked, by the racist, racist South Africa apartheid troops. It was Cuba who came to rescue Namibian women and children. The children who survived the Kasinga massacre were taken to Cuba, and two schools were set up in the island of youth, and many young Namibians were educated there. And today they are playing a critical role in the management and the administration of our government. Therefore, we should not abandon the people of Palestine in their just struggle for freedom and self-determination. In the same way we were supported, we should continue to support the people of Palestine both as a nation, as a party, Swapo party, and of course the government of the Republic of Namibia has that responsibility, has been given a mandate by the people of Namibia to represent them. And that's why yesterday, our four great leaders, as they were mentioned, we are talking about Comrade Yas Arafat, Chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization, Comrade Fidel Castro, the leader of the Cuban Revolution, Comrade uh, Hulk Chavez, the Supreme Commander of the Bolivarian Revolution, and our own Dr. Comrade Sam Shafishuna Nuyoma, founding president, father of the Namibian Revolution, and father of the Namibian nation. It is therefore my sincere hope that as we come together to honor our leaders and celebrate their ex extraordinary faith and love of their country, we must be inspired to embrace their idols, their ideas and values that they stood for. We need to honor our liberation values. We have a patriotic duty to ensure that their sacrifice did not die, go in vain. We must make sure that as they have won the political independence in the areas where they have won, we must make sure that economic independence is also won. I would like to pay homage and salute these revolutionary leaders of the political parties who have shaped the vision of our unity and respect emancipation from yoke of foreign occupation and apartheid. We salute them for their dedication and support to the fight the international community recognize the legitimacy of our just cause for freedom, equality, and justice, and endorse 
the people struggle led by Swapo, whereby Swapo was recognized as the sole and authentic representative of the Namibian people. Similarly, I'm sure you are aware of Resolution 67 slash 19 passed by the UN General Assembly on the 29th November 2012, granting a non-member observer status for the state of Palestine. Now as we stand, we are at a point where we are demanding that time must come when the UN should admit the state of Palestine as a full member of the United Nations. And I believe the civil societies in Namibia, the civil society in all progressive forces will join forces in demanding them because we know we are fighting a just cause and one day it is going to be achieved. Comrades, it was on the 26th of August 1966 when the situation became clear that South Africa was not willing to give up Namibia peacefully, hence the swap leaders decided to take up arms. Since then, our struggle has to be fought from three main fronts, which is the political front, the diplomatic front, as well as the military front. And this has really saved us well, that it has brought us where we are, as these three strategies were complementing one another. While we agree to negotiation, as mentioned by Comrade Nahas here, Swapo never renounced the armed liberation struggle, and that continued until the Battle of Quito Quanevalo the largest conventional battle in Africa since the Second World War. And it's not only me or Swapo is saying it. It's recorded in the documentation of the international community. Mm -hmm. That the Quito Quanevalo is the largest conventional battle in Africa since the Second World War. Where the Cuban mm -hmm. internationalists under the leadership of Comrade Fidel Castro, together with the Angolan armed forces and freedom fighter of Swapo naming the plan, they defeated what was known to be the biggest army in Africa, which is the apartheid South African force at Quito Quanevalo. It was the Battle of Quito Quanevalo that changed the course of history in Southern Africa. The impact of the Battle of Quito Quanevaro had a consequence for Angola, Namibia, and South Africa. Indeed, it has been called a turning point in the history of Southern Africa. The blood has been flowing between the three during that time of the pregnancy of our liberation struggle. And of course, we all know that in 1994, democratic South Africa was also born. Therefore, comrades, I believe our four leaders have drawn their strengths from their visionary in every battle they have won. Therefore, this generation must remember that they are the beneficiary of this proud heritage. And it is of the utmost importance that our people are also made aware of this glorious history to ensure that we do not give up and continue to hold hope on the economic victory. I call on our young generation to really appreciate our past, for them to be able to live in a good present and to shape a good future. We all know that a nation without a history or a nation without a culture, you will not know, if you don't know your history, you will not know where you are, 
leave you alone where you are going to go. So this is what our young people need to learn from these visionary leaders. It is my hope that unveiling this artwork will unite us in using this opportunity to reflect on the sacrifice of both our heroes and heroines. Furthermore, it's an opportunity to turn us to chart out a future which entails our belief of peace, democracy, transparent, fair, and a just international system. Let us continue to advocate for such a system that will bring the power and the reach of the world together to save, to save the lives of millions and pursue sustainable development and human security as our common call. Comrades, recommendation of the United Nations Settlement Plan for that country and plea to continue our, in, our unwavering commitment to the cause of Palestine, struggle for self-determination and independence, and firmly support the heroic people of Palestine in their call for freedom and independence from the brutal and illegal occupation until victory is achieved. We recall during our struggle, it was then apartheid was declared a crime against humanity. We have listened to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Palestine that what is happening now in Palestine, it has changed from one phase to another, and now is at the point of apartheid. And that is another call where it has been advocated, rightly so, for the international community to recognize that what is happening in Palestine is apartheid, so that we know that crime against the community is being committed in that country. And rest be assured that Namibia will continue to be with you. Namibia will not abandon the principle of self-determination. And as such, we'll continue to support the legitimate struggle of the people of Palestine against Israel occupation and expansion of the illegal Jew settlement into the Palestine land. Once again, dear comrades, I want to end by sincerely thanking our artist Namboa for the pride you have made for this nation. Viva our four leaders! Viva! Viva Swapo Party! Viva! Viva the Palestine Liberation Organization! Viva! Viva the Communist Party of Cuba! Viva! Viva the United Socialist Party of Venezuela! Viva. Long life the spirit of revolution. Long, Long life the spirit of revolution. Long I want to hear a revolutionary response. Let's go on the count of three. One, two, three. Viva! Viva! 
interesado en Tahiti, viva. Viva. Viva tu atua, viva. Viva. Ala, la tu de atua, ala, la. Long live to the Sabo Party, long live. Long live. No, it's okay. It's okay. Come in. Come in.